Okay. So we're finally going to watch ISC. Inside Star Citizen, hull of a show, winter 2022. Uh, I looked at the This Week in Star Citizen. So this is going to be the hull A feature, and then there's going to be an all-environments sprint report. And um, those two things... I mean, I have a whole A, I'm pretty sure. I might have given it away. Um, and the environments are things that, like, obviously we all play and we're all excited for. But for me, I, I'm surprised because uh, at this point, uh, Star Citizen went into Evocati last night. Uh, this is Thursday. Uh, I watch ISC on Thursday mornings. Uh, or, excuse me, this is Friday. I watch ISC on Friday mornings, um, and Evo... 317 happened i think last night um but i've been doing my taxes and stuff so i haven't had an opportunity to play it yet all right uh, enough of an int intro for an isc that isn't gonna be that exciting with the game as it is right now loading really cargo loud. is a very simplistic mechanic you go to a terminal you click buy bam it pops up on your ship but that is changing in the near future where it is going to become an actual physical loading process. So having externally mounted cargo for the whole series will be a, a big benefit for players. Okay, so again, to me, that just sounds a little bit like salesman stuff, but also a really good um, bit of foreshadowing into the new cargo system. So, the plan here is for ships that have external cargo to be, I guess if there's cargo timers, these will have lower ones. So, the whole series ships will likely have lower cargo timers than your, uh, I don't know, the what's, I think the same comparison in cargo is the cutlass to the hull A. So, I would imagine the cutlass would have a bit of a longer, uh, cargo timer or loading time than the whole a would but i wonder if and when we get the ability to manually uh like put cargo in will that translate to like quote unquote real life uh like the in-game if i'm doing it so yeah interesting but I don't know. So that's what I'm thinking is like that when it comes to loading timers, that's how they're going to give the ship the advantage. And that's how they're trying to sell it to us at the like that just sounds like he's trying to sell me on the ship. I think I think that's literally what they ask these guys um, when they bring them on uh, and record them as they're like, so sell me on the whole A. <laughs> right. And then and then they do it. And there's nothing wrong with the Miss Cole series is a lineup of ships uh, purely designed to carry cargo from point A to B. And the lineup consists of five ships, the Hull A being the smallest. And I have... They're not even showing the E. A, B, C, D, E. Oh, they are showing the E. Okay. Dude, this thing is... I don't even understand what that thing will do and like i can't comprehend the cargo or the the economy with what we know currently in the game now right the hully being the largest as you progress up the sizes you move into larger quantities going longer distances okay so as you move up larger quantities that can go longer longer distances so bigger quantum fuel Larger fuel tank. Makes sense to me. Um, I've always, like, I don't know how you guys have thought. I've always thought of the whole series this way. And I've also thought the same thing about the the Argo Cargo in the same way. Uh, we have orbital stations above every landing zone. And uh, I always saw these small ships being the but it, it just it doesn't make sense uh in in reality on how the game plays but i always envision them being like okay 
you bring these like long haul cargo situations to the cargo decks and from the cargo decks you disperse everything uh down to the surface of the planet and the moons around and i guess for the argo cargo i always thought of it being um more for that it, it, it's very weird to have a vehicle that's only used to move items from ship to ship that's why i really believe that the argo cargo needs uh, a quantum drive that just does blind jumps around planets right it should have like incredibly low fuel or something like that because it, it's it, it's so limited in its use but something like the whole a is kind of like perfect right 46 scu bang bring it down to the surface uh from the cargo deck and you can bring you know a thousand scu to the cargo deck in a big ship let's say i mean i think i, I don't even remember what the whole e can carry but let's say it's a thousand scu just for the story and then you take your whole b and whole a down to the surface you know, maybe with your org, you have a bunch of them and you disperse all that material to, I don't know, the land that you own down there. But that's how I've always visioned this is that it was a, a very clear bring it to the cargo deck and then you get missions or you use the cargo deck yourself to disperse the material where you want. Um, because that is where you would have the space to store said cargo. Um but yeah, I don't know. It's it's just how I always looked at this ship is it was um, station to surface. The hull E is 8,000 SCU. I, I don't... Yeah, we'll see what it ends up with, but 8,000 SCU is like, can that ship even be on screen at 20 FPS? I have no idea, right? So... And then you use the smaller ships in the series to do the short range of long distance cargo hauling. The short range of long distance cargo hauling what the the what did he just say can we hear that whole sentence over again and then you use the smaller ships in the series to do the short range of long distance cargo hauling sir what is short distance cargo hauling i i see what selby says selby said should have said the shortest of long distance cargo hauling sure um but now i'm just confused <laughs> I i'm actually confused uh because i and it more it'll make sense later okay i'll just keep watching that but i'm more like well what is short distance the cargo hauling? is the entry into both the whole series and the sort of dedicated cargo hauling profession it is designed for getting cargo on and off the ship as quick as possible but so all the cargo is external it is the best size to amount of cargo ship in the game for new players for new players, players. into it and it okay so we're selling to new players here like this is the part where it's like okay you're selling but uh that's not true in the current experience so i think he's speaking from what the the whole series will be after the cargo refit. It's really a one person, you and your cargo ship. You just can't make money with 46 SCU. It has Good money flexibility right that some of the larger hull series ships don't have, such as the fact it can be fully loaded and land planet side or in hangars or in pads with all that cargo. Nice. That looks awesome. You've got everything on board for you to live out in the verse and nice. deliver your cargo. Yeah. You have a very I, I really traditional MISC cockpit layout. You have a big dashboard surrounding you with all your buttons, switches, and controls. Not quite as restrictive view as the Freelancer, but it is very much styled in the same influence as a lot of the MISC ships. I Moving love the back, exterior so you far. then have the hybrid component airlock room, where okay. the bulk of the components are, as well as the entry into the ship, which is a side ladder. When that door opens for access from the ground of both EVA, that room is sealed so it doesn't vent the, anyone in the bridge or anyone in the living quarters, which is the room immediately behind that. There you have your bed, you have your bed. All right, this is, these are the things that I love about the interiors of ships, is like, do I feel like I could live here? Um, and then this, it's very clear that this is like where the front part of the ship stops too, and then you have that back area. 
I totally feel like I can live here. These ships are these like little interiors are what excites me about the game is just like solo cargo hauling, riding around, do 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 do, you know, and doing my cargo hauling. Very, you know, the short distance stuff, whatever, the easy stuff, you know, just, ch just hanging out. This seems like a super chill ship to to do that in. One day, right? My biggest issue is is that it is hard to imagine what cargo hauling will be until we know more about the cargo refactor, until we know more about, like, how do you plan on doing cargo missions? You know, things like that. Because this is, like, totally a just take cargo mission ship over and over, you know, missions over and over again uh, in your little immediate vicinity around a planet, right? Uh, let bring some of this from here to there bring some of that to here to there and you just chill you know that's it's kind of like that you have netflix on the other screen and it it's like the i don't know the elite dangerous ship in a way right i think cargo hauling can really be like that or you can have the big ships that maybe need a little bit more i don't know if you have to maintain the cargo or keep an eye on things and have extra people on those ships like on the caterpillar and hull uh not hull um the C2 and maybe the whole C and, and beyond that there's a little bit more hands on and maybe you need more people, but a ship like this is yeah, just move stuff back and forth. You know, maybe you get attacked by a pirate and, and have to deal with that, you know, leave them some cargo or whatever, you know, I think it would be cool. Uh, do I think the prospector interior needs a rework uh, to match the new layout of the whole a no, it's pretty much the same. I, I don't know if there's a kitchen in the prospector off the top of my head. So you know, if there is, it would be smaller than this. And I think that that's okay because I don't see the prospector as, um, I, I don't know. Like this one feels, yeah, I, I, I see the prospector as you can live in it, but it doesn't feel as homey as this, but it's also more industrial. This is like your 18 wheeler truck. They have the bed and everything in there. It just makes Basic sense. Basic food making facilities. And then at the very rear of the ship, you have a small bathroom area, which has the classic toilet shower combo nice. and sink. The Hull A is releasing before the cargo refactor comes out. So it's still going to function as a cargo ship. Um, but a lot of its benefits will be unlocked over time as the cargo refactor comes in and is iterated upon. And it will just get a much stronger and stronger choice of cargo ship. People have been okay. So again, um, you're gonna try it out in the PTU. You're gonna go, yo. The animations look sick. Uh, you may feel the way that I do about it uh, in the long term, Star Citizen. Like I could totally see myself using this ship, but not now, right? So in the current Star Citizen experience, forty something S SCU is not gonna cut it uh, to make any sort of money. It, like I feel like. I was risking a million credits to make a hundred thousand credits or something like that, two hundred thousand credits, uh, and you know each run was taking a fairly significant amount of time. I I just cargo hauling in the economy is in such a weird place that these ships just don't they don't feel right yet, and it's just one of those things where we have to kind of wait until those aspects come in, and that it it is what it is, and I, I'm willing to wait for it, but yeah. You know, the ship excites me, but n not now. Wanting the whole series in game for a long time and with the release of the A, that's a reality now. It's been great to get this out there and it's helped us prove out some of the issues that have prevented the whole C from coming out. Looking forward to seeing everyone playing with the whole A and getting ready for the whole C. Yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, like Duke said in, in the chat, like the cargo refactor, they made it very clear in, in this statement as well that... Um, it's not just going to be flip a switch on and it's going to be great. Uh, it's going to get its features down the line, which obviously makes sense, right? Um, it's not going to be like fully turned on and, and, and amazing on day one. So it, it will gradually see improvements to it over time. The whole A is making its small but impactful debut in the upcoming Alpha 317, and will continue to grow into its intended role in the persisting universe 
as the cargo refactor comes online and continues to there iterate is no impact subsequent in 317, patches. But okay. And up next, it's time for a special locations-based sprint report, so let's get to it. Let Hold on, guys. Uh, pyro stations, pyro moons, uh, what, what were they called? Uh, homestead, outposts, der and then the derelict versions of them. Did I get it right? Let's start things off this week with a look at current progress on cloudscaping for Planet no. Hurston. <laughs> what? Clouds on Hurston? What you're nice. seeing here are the results of recent explorations in taking the pipeline you've seen demonstrated before completely out of Substance Designer and into Houdini entirely, potentially allowing for an increase in simulation data and better shaping than we had previously. Now, at this point, it's still too early to say if these will make it into Alpha 317 or require another quarter to bake, as it were. But as with all things Star Citizen, this refinement of existing process will yield better and faster results once it's all properly dialed in and approved. I hope so. And while we're on her- Because taking uh, six months to bring clouds to another planet is not gonna work, right? So hopefully they get that refined and, and working out. But I imagine that every, uh, every pyro, situation has their clouds already set up and maybe it's a little more complicated to add to a already existing planet hurston let's take a quick look around maria pure of heart the hospital coming to lauraville in the upcoming alpha 317. i love the hurston business district style it's my favorite style out of all the uh the places the cement walls and the gold and, and all that stuff it looks in the black uh, of all like the hospitals we've whatever, seen so far so cool. this one may be my favorite combining the severe architecture and attitudes of Hurston with the benevolent purpose and ideology of a hospital is yielding a truly unique visual experience. Can't wait for the morphologist video. For. It's a morgue. Moving higher up and much farther out, let's check in with some pyro system. Let's call Thank it you, space Stoma. box, for lack of a better term, development. Now this potential background for all adventures in pyro is coming along nicely with pipeline improvements yielding stars and subtly different shapes and hues, and cloud formations designed to hook in and support those you'll actually be flying through. And it all makes for a nice contrast with this planet and its blue atmosphere you can see here. And then down on the planets, when the exposure changes at night or at sunset or whatnot, you can see the hues and forms change appropriately, that's which is cool. super cool. Yeah, that's cool. That's actually beyond cool. that. The team is also creating some large scale space points of interest in the pyro system. Things that can act like checkpoints, as it were, before you enter certain gas pockets approaching outlaw stations. Now, like white box phase, this is early days, just blocking out shapes. I'm sorry, guys. I want to listen to that again and, and how he described what they would be, because that's like it. That's one of the few situations where they described maybe how you would play the game. They don't do that very often, so I like hearing what they say when they do that. Appropriately, which is super cool. Beyond that, the team is also creating some large scale space points of interest in the pirate. Large scale space points of interest. System. Things that can act like checkpoints, as it were, before you enter certain gas pockets approaching outlaw stations. Things that act as checkpoints. What is a checkpoint? So, possibly this is how I see it. Uh, you can't jump directly jump. In, you may not be able to directly jump into a station. You know how you... Um, when you jump to like an L1, you have to jump to it twice. When you jump to, uh, maybe that's it. Is like, you can't go directly into the clouds. So this is like before the clouds. And then you can go in because the clouds are really dense. And maybe there's like electrical interference or something that that will be planned at a later date. I don't know. Um, but I'm trying to think from a gameplay standpoint, how the game plays now. That doesn't entirely make sense because we just have quantum drives that bring us really close, but I don't know. I don't know what the intention is here. 
Now, like white box phase, this is early days, just blocking out shapes. And, and, <laughs> and before anybody freaks out, the Bengal you see here is just to show the proper scale read. Yeah, it's huge. Okay. <laughs> As these continue to develop, they'll get things like final geometry and lights to flesh out the experience further. But it's already shaping up to be a dramatically different experience than traveling through the Stanton system. Okay, so that is telling too, a dramatically different experience than traveling through the Stanton system. So it kind of sounds like I might be onto something there is that you can't just jump into the clouds. You have to go through these checkpoints to get into them, maybe. Right? It like looks like it was closed and there was the opening to go through. And while we're in Pyro, let's take a look at the Yucca Brevifolia, our outer space version of the Joshua Tree. Okay. Remember these barren planets that was Pyro? Holy now, crap, you might it's be so saying different to yourself, now. It's just a tree. Well, yeah. But I thought it looked really cool. So you have to look at it for a bit. Okay, fair shirt. enough. And I really like the dry bark on the trunk there. I can't see the dry bark on the trunk there. <laughs> and back up in space, the props team is continuing their work building a whole new array of run down, beat up, customized and unique items for the pyro system to help sell a very different experience for life in outlaw space. Just really cool stuff. And I want to shout out Joseph, Lewis, Thomas, Dan, Stephane, Sophie, and the rest of the team for some exceptional work making things not look good? That doesn't sound right, but you know what I mean. I mean, it looks a lot like Grimhex to and me. Look at these trash piles. It's like Grimhex without the lights. Disgusting. And awesome. And disgusting. Which is great. Of course, Grimhex some looks, of these outlaw awesome. stations I mean, will have run down space clinks aboard. So the team at Montreal have been beating those up a bit. That's just concept art, right? And I'm going to take this opportunity to remind some folks that not all outlaws are filthy, disgusting slops. Just the ones that hang around in Pyro. You fancy outlaws out there with your pinkies out while drinking Radagast from a teacup. Maybe it was this that just didn't look real on the first picture. So I thought it was rendered. But the more you look at it, the more it looks like the game. They want to so, make your know. homes in another system. Finally, let's take another look at the continuing development of colonialism outposts, including these <laughs> new liquid storage tanks. Some new light fixtures. Well, those are very orange lights. Well, they look better in the uh, Wells. building. Excuse me? I really hope those have functionality. Don't get excited. And new garden modules. Oh my God, don't get excited. 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 All right, I'm not excited. You know it's the future because of hexagons. Then, from one outpost type to another, another look at white box explorations of derelict outposts. All right, I think I did a pretty good job of this. Now, like all white box phases, it's an important step in identifying which areas are likely to become traversal nightmares and may want to be adjusted for gameplay reasons before we move on to final art. Guys, remember, the NPCs get these first, then the players. We don't know when the players will get it. There has been gardening and little hydroponic things at Outpost for many, many years now. They provide zero functionality to the game currently to the player. It will be the same. I'm setting my expectations. I'm not telling you how to think. I am speaking out loud my own expectations. And I'm setting them properly. But overall, these derelict outposts are another opportunity for stories and missions to be told across Pyro's cool. planets and moons. The roots and everything. So what do we learn this week? Well, we learned that the Hole is ready to make its mark on the persistent universe. 
that the cloud tech pipeline continues. It's literally not because it won't make its mark until the cargo refactor. Also, the Whataburger shirt to be refined and updated, as we saw in Hurston, and that Pyro continues to shape up to be an experience unlike any currently available in the Stanton system. Now, don't forget that Stella Fortuna is just around the corner. Keep an eye out on the robertspaceindustries.com website for details. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. We'll see you all next week. Thank you, Jared. Nice. So, a better episode than I thought. I think it provides a bit more information than I thought uh, would have been there. But, yeah. Um, cargo refactor is coming. It's going to come online a bit slowly, it sounds like. They're just kind of giving themselves that that uh, rope you know, giving themselves a little bit of uh, slack. And um, I really hope, I really hope, like we know that they are working on the tools to have us make our own outposts, right? I see wells and I think like, you know, making your own water. I see wells and I also see mining your own underground things and i and like the juices start flowing of the imagine stuff and it, i get excited but i should know better at this point and i still don't <laughs> i still don't those things are are something that excites me so i don't know thanks for watching this with me guys it was fun